This podcast is rated R for restricted. Under 17 requires accompanying parent or adult guardian. Mission to 15. Welcome to the Mission 250 Filmcast, where we are watching the best movies ever made. Sometimes, half the time, we watch uh, bonus episodes, and we are halfway through a trilogy here. We're going to watch the Cornetto trilogy. We've watched two out of the three so far. This week, we're watching Hot Fuzz, which was made in 2007, directed by Edgar Wright, written by Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg. The synopsis is, a skilled London police officer is transferred to a small town with a dark secret. And I'm sitting here with TC and John. Hello. Yep. How are you guys doing this week? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Sounds about right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You looking forward to the summer? You guys got any summer plans? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, <Wow, that's... laughs> I thought it was Thursday all the day. I find out it's Wednesday. I'm sad. Oh, that's not the way to go with that. No. I keep, I was talking to Sam. Tomorrow's Friday and it's the weekend. My daughter is like, like, no, it's no, not. No, it's not. <laughs> I'm smarter might be than the you first already, time. Dad. I know. It might be one of the first times I've like blatantly been completely, totally wrong. <laughs> I, I <laughs> doubt that, John. Something? Come on. Yeah. In front of her. <laughs> and she's picked up on it. Yeah, no, you're right. You're, yeah. you're right to doubt that. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, so that was my attempt at adding some fluff here. We had some technical issues on this episode. Yeah. Uh, I work off of a tablet, and my cat bit the charger head so the charger doesn't work. So now the tablet is out of battery, and I got nothing to charge it with. So all my notes and commentary stuff, are not gone, but not here for this episode. But not in, not available yeah. at the current time. And John yeah. was tasked, and TC, who also bought the the triple pack. You can get. I bought the pack some, and never watched it. Yeah, I was tried to watch some. Of, we were. I was going to do commentary because I didn't find anything to read. I tried to. I, I started to listen to the because I still didn't get the triple pack in time. I was listening to the Tarantino Edgar Wright commentary, and I fell asleep, and ah, I dreamed. Yes. That I was like half asleep, so being eaten I kept, alive by chipmunks as they laughed at you. No, no. Well, <laughs> <sort> <laughs> of, no, no. What I dreamed is somehow I'm in the room with Edgar Wright and Quentin Tarantino, and they won't talk back to me. I keep trying to talk to them, but they won't talk to me. They just keep on going talking as if yeah. I'm not there. It's so yeah, humiliating. That was a weird one. That would happen. I think in reality, it would, and it, it's yeah, pretty much right. yeah, normal, right? So yeah. yeah. It, it I watched that very, commentary a little bit on 1.5 speed as I typically do, but oh, both no Edgar Wright and Quentin Tarantino both have that like awkward kid, but also coke head. <laughs> yeah, type yeah of thing. right. But at 1.5 speed, fast. back and forth, it just sounded like someone gave a bunch <laughs> like, of cocaine like chip and monks. chipmunks. Yeah, it was it was too much. I couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's it's fun. They're they're cute though. They they were they were. It was fun. In, in the small time I listened to it, I didn't learn hardly anything about the movie. Oh, you're not getting shit out fun. of these commentary tracks. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. There's five of yeah. them, and they don't really talk about, you know, anything, anything. trivia worthy. Yeah. They just I need an excuse just trying to, to sit around. Five. Yeah. They yeah, like hanging, hanging out with each out. other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're like just chilling, and then they're like, "Fuck it, record." Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, yeah. it was and it was fun. It was like it was fun to sit and ha- and listen to Quentin Tarantino and Edgar Wright hanging out for a couple hours. Mm-hmm. That's that was kind of fun. And it was Tarantino's but, yeah. favorite movie of the year. So far. So far. Whenever this came out. It came out in 420, that actually. That's pretty easy to remember. It came yeah, out in yeah. 420. Because uh, why not? But yeah, this week is my turn to review this movie first. Go. Yeah, this movie's hard to watch right after Shaun of the Dead. There's mm. something about the really? characters in this movie. I don't know. I didn't like it as much. I, it's like, oh, man. It's pretty funny. Oh, it's easy. You're going to go positive, I hope. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong. I could have just been in a bad mood, honestly, but I wasn't really laughing oh, that much in this like movie. Me. I know, yeah. right? <laughs> I hate it when they, I, that sounds annoying. Do I sound that annoying? Yeah, oh, you no. do. All the time, John. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, go on, I'm good. just having a crisis over here. Yeah, you go on, yeah. do a little movie review. <laughs> I'm realizing what an asshole I am. Yeah. Anyway. I can't yeah. totally like, I don't know, like what, listening to the commentary tracks, they point out all of their funny moments. And I noticed more funny things happening while they pointed them out than I did when I just watched it. There was like some really slow parts of this movie where it kind of drags on. And the, I don't know, the action stuff was, I didn't care enough about the characters for that to have any weight, really. And I don't like action movies enough where there's no character weight to care about the action sort of thing. Mm-hmm. It was, I, I laughed a couple times, I guess. But uh, yeah, I think the biggest problem I had with this was that uh, the Simon Pegg character wasn't likable like he was in the other movie. He's kind of just like a, a robot. He's like a stone-faced, 
you know, unlikable person mm-hmm. who his relationship even with Nick Frost doesn't really doesn't seem to be it realistic. Didn't it didn't hit yeah. for me. I don't know. Um, yeah. But I mean, in terms of positive stuff, the editing is like really noticeably good. They do a lot of really cool stuff with transitions and in cuts and it's pretty fast most of the time. Yep. Um, the soundtrack is cool. Like the shots are cool. The sets are cool. There's a lot to, <laughs> to like about this. I think I just don't know. It's just, just yeah. be your, your mood. You must be. Yeah. Just it was a mood. Of you. I didn't laugh. Like, this movie you're supposed to like laugh and really? cheer. I laughed. Yeah. I laughed. Fu- like, Which I, I, I want to know what parts are funny. I mean, all <laughs> the ones where he's, I mean, I, I thought the, that opening one where he's like, looking for his girlfriend and they're on the phone. I was laughing at that. That was funny. He's like, no, what's going on here? And she's like, I told you what's going on. And he's like, no, here. I just thought right, that right. was funny. I thought that yeah. was great. I like and that whole scene where he's like, it can't be Ed. Or like, who are you dating? Yeah, he's the one Dave, like, no. Dave. And it's like, Dave. Yeah. Dave's like, would Bob look like someone I date? It's Dave. And it was like the guy right next to him. So I thought that was so yeah. stupid and so funny. Yeah. And they're uh, both made up in the, the fucking, you know, Scrubs, so like you don't know what they look like. Do you, you know, know who the uh, the girl is in the in the face mask? No, no. It's Kate Blanchett in there. Oh, really? Uncredited. Kate Blanchett. Would never know. No way. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Wow. Uh, um, all right. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't want to drag this down. Parts. T- yeah. TC, no, you, you already like have. It. I know. It's, all done. it's already down. It's yeah. dead. I'm sorry. TC, yeah. you go next. Sucked. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I thought it was funny as hell. I don't know. Nice. I, I I I do see where you're coming from with the character. I, I hadn't actually thought about it like that. Now that you mentioned it it's bringing me down no I'm just <laughs> yeah. sorry I, uh, I didn't want to I would have asked to go uh, not first but you guys never let me do no, that so no, you know, no, no, I didn't no, even no. try this what do you mean you could ask to go not first we've done I that totally no we haven't done that why. no we yeah, haven't no, yeah. yes we no, have not with me you, yeah. you make fun of me until I have to go I tried no, you to go first you have to go first what we bully you we don't bully you I do. Yes, you do. Oh, do you? Oh, okay. Oh. What are you talking about, John? Yeah, I don't know what I'm talking yeah. about. I'm all tangled up I, in the chair now. God damn it. I don't even know I, what day of the week it is. What the hell do I, I know? I know, right? Exactly. <laughs> I'm fighting with the chair over here. I can't even get my freaking head. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Denny's, Denny's fucking God, losing don't. it. <laughs> I, um, Denny can't sit. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I thought it was funny. I thought the guy, the serial killer Skinner there is great. I think that's fucking. Yeah, hilarious. yeah, oh yeah. He comes up to me, he's like, "Arrest me!" <laughs> I thought that. I would. I thought that phrase was funny. Yeah, Very right. Sinful. Uh, I'm just. Sl- I'm a Dal- slasher. Timothy Dalton I'm a was slasher. just enjoying the hell out of himself. It was wonderful. Yeah. Um, but I do see that the you know the character definitely wasn't anywhere near as likable, and the storyline is kind of similar in the sense that he like doesn't have his girlfriend. He wants his girlfriend back. It's kind of like got the same. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't have the romantic part to it though. Yeah, the right. There wasn't like, any of that. Yeah. It was it didn't have the romantic comedy part, which maybe that's why Danny didn't like it as much. I don't know. And no. there's some other people from the office again in here from the UK office, and she's fucking Martin hilarious. And, yeah, yeah, they were they were funny, man. And those two the two detectives, the two detectives are, so, are great. I love them. They're so funny. Yeah. Just like do nothing shitheads. <laughs> they like just chalk up every little thing as an accident. It was like the best. I don't know. It's the best perception of cops, you know, like, cause that's what everyone assumes what they do. Right. Like who knows what they really do. Um, so I don't know. I thought, I mean, I thought some of that gore was unnecessary. Like when the fucking f- rock falls down from the church. I like that like, part. Oh, I was yeah, like, that was like ridiculous. Ridiculous. Woke up. <laughs> yeah, it was ridiculous. It was pretty it was nasty. nasty. It looked it real. Yeah. It, yeah. The it spike did. through the chin was around, awful. Like, the fuck. severed heads were pretty good. Yeah. yeah. The spike through the yeah. chin was when he was oh, talking. Yeah. Oh, he's like, yeah. he's like, oh, this really hurts. <laughs> it really I'm hurts. in trouble. <laughs> I thought it was pretty hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. They never have somebody, they never see that. You never see somebody like talking like that, being impaled. And he's like, oh, this is really bad. <laughs> I'm in big trouble now. <laughs> yeah, I, like I mean, that. I do see though. Like, there's really no. It was just some a bunch of funny jokes, in my opinion. That like the storyline, I didn't even care about the story, uh, right? Yeah. Like, I assumed that the fucking guy was a serial killer, right? You know, like you kind of figure all this shit out and you know where it's headed, right? They kind of like give you inklings of like he's gonna be the serial killer, and you're like, we already know this. I don't need, I don't need to. Yeah, keep, the first like, time you know he smiles, I mean? you're like, this is yeah. the bad guy right here. Yeah, uh, absolutely. right, right, right. Like I already know this. Yeah. So I mean, there was like stuff like that that I didn't, you know, I don't know. I guess review in my head. I just kind of like moved on from it as soon yeah. as it happened. And uh, I, I just love those two. I, even though I know their yeah. relationship wasn't as good, like they're just the way they, the way they react to each other. Like when he fucking stabs himself in the ketchup. And it's like, it just got you up. And then like, he, he like responds with a laugh and a drink. And it's like, <laughs> it's just, they're good friends, yeah. you know? And you could see it even in the way they respond, even when they're acting, you know? 
it's just one of those movies. I think maybe you're right in comparison to like when you watch it so close to the other one, you have like expectations. Where yeah. like if you had seen these things separately, you probably wouldn't have. Been well, and you'd like, seen like, Hot you know. Fuzz first. Yeah, and I, I liked it. Like, it. like back, it, yeah. I saw it like a long time ago, like probably close to when right. it came out. But when it came yeah, out, yeah. I didn't see Shaun of the Dead when it first came out, or you know, mm-hmm, since we right. since the podcast and just back to back kind of. Yeah, I don't know. Just Not I quite really back my to favorite back. I mean, we part. We had like a two week break, but still. Yeah, yeah. but that's pretty close. Uh, yeah. It's pretty. My close. My favorite part of Shaun yeah. of the Dead was like their relationship and how funny it was together. I just felt like. Although they were trying to be, I feel like they were trying to be funny in the same kind of way, but like there was no natural stuff going on in this. Right. Movie. The thing about yeah. Shaun of the Dead, their Let's relationship seems so lived in. That's what was so really funny about it. It seemed really genuine and it seemed like this has been going on for years or this is like, you know, they were just together. And and that's kind of like the ending exclamation point of the movie because he's chained up, you know, in, in the, uh, and he's still playing video games, even though he's a zombie. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's it's harder. Well, he here has to, where he kills gotta, his own mom, and there's actual real emotions in that scene. Yeah. Like he actually kills his mom, and his friend like comes close to dying, and he sees people die. And this yeah. one, it's like it's all comedy. Like there's no way. No to one, yeah, there's no. Yeah, there's, there's no, no drama. Right. There, there's, there's no, no drama. As much. I agree yeah. to some extent. Yeah, um, right. I do think uh, I really like the contrast of Peg's character in this movie with the last movie. I kind of, that's that made me kind of enjoy watching it more back to back. Is seeing. A different take. He's not being like the nerdy guy here. Now he's the like kick-ass professional right from the beginning. I think he does that well. I like. I enjoy watching him being the like the confident uh, jerk almost, or not mm-hmm. that he's just like such a goody two shoes that that everybody sort of dislikes him in a way. I thought he still plays that role really well. I don't. I think he does that sort of confidence role well also, and I enjoyed watching that. I, I like that whole opening sequence very much. Yeah, um, yeah, it's the wrong the training one. Montage. Oh, and then he turns the around. The training montage, yeah. but then, then when he's up there in front of each of the of the inspectors, you know, they keep bringing in one oh, higher yeah. up, and and it keeps ending with like it's great because it's like you know you first see Martin Freeman, it's Martin, and then Bill Nye comes in, it's Bill now, he's like the head guy. <laughs> Um, yeah. and I, I just sort of enjoyed that whole sequence where it, it has the same kind of like planned out feeling that that opening sequence of Shaun of the Dead it has when they're like meet all the different characters. I mean, this one again, isn't as good cause you're right. Um, you have two different sets, you, you're, you're like moving to two different scenes. So like those cops that you're introduced there, like the, the chain of command, they seem really interesting and funny, but you move on from them. You have to go to a whole different town. He doesn't meet. You know, they don't really establish like a real friendship until like maybe uh, over a third of the way into the movie. So you're not really seeing them together that much for a while, Nick Frost and Peg. So so there's less of that happening. So I, I think that, you know, Shaun of the Dead had that going for it where you get this ensemble right off the bat. They they really like slam dunk introduce you to everybody and then you watch them move through the whole film. And I think that makes like the character interactions a lot more believable and interesting. And and, mm. and it, it just the funny parts there just sort of pop a bit more. I think here it's harder when you've got different scene, scenarios, different characters, a lot of different things happening. So so I definitely can see I think Shaun of the Dead holds together much better as like a really good ensemble comedy. It, but here I, I still enjoyed this and. I mean, I, I, and I did it was, not. I, I, love those I mean, I, yeah, I, I didn't know. like dislike it or anything like that. You know, just compared, I was like a little bit disappointed coming out of it because I noticed yeah. how little I was laughing. And again, I was like, what's right. wrong with me? Like, this is supposed right. to be funny. It I'm is not laughing at any funny. of this. Yeah. Like, I'm just kind of like, yeah. I'm expecting everything they do. I'm kind of expecting it. And then any of the jokes that are based on an edit, I just, I'm like, oh, wow, that was a pretty, pretty good edit. Like, that's all I'm doing. I'm not like, yeah, ah, you know, yeah. like, huh? Yeah, yeah, that 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 hot. Uh, the other one must have just queued up that because that used that joke all the time too. The edit joke, yeah, like, edits right. like one shot into the next shot, right? And then like one movement of one person's movement finishes in the other shot, even though it's a different person, right? right. Yeah, that that's been used a lot. So and it's I done see really that, well. Like, yeah. like, there's one where it someone gets well. hit in the head yeah. with something, and it cuts to like Simon Pig sitting down in a chair. Down, and, that and looks yeah, great. Yeah. It looks yeah. so smooth. Like, yeah, it was smooth as hell, right? Yeah. And yeah. it was such a good transition. Yeah, yeah. Because they were like two separate. It was such a cliff, like a cliff edge. It's you a know? lot tougher. Yeah. Again, there was more yeah. going on. They had to like introduce the bad guys. You had to get to know each of these bad guys a little bit. It, where in the zombie movie, the bad guys are just incidental to the characters. They're just zombies. We don't. True. You know, there's there's no like war about who they there's are. There's no or motivation. Or yeah, yeah, it's nothing. Yeah. So. But here, yeah, they introduce you to like a whole round table of bad guys. And even at the end when yeah. they're facing all of them in town, 
You think they're all yeah. in town, but then people come out of this place and someone comes out of there and they're like, oh, I've seen these guys before. I just have no idea who they are. And then the right. guy like with the blunderbuss at the end, like busts into the police precinct somehow. Like, how yeah. did he get in there? Who the hell is that guy? Like, I don't that, know. That was the neighborhood right. watch guy that right. came in. But yeah. That one, the the guy that was pissed about the statue was, I think that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> but they're so mad about the, the living statue. Like, we've got to do something funny. about the living statue. Yeah, and it's I know. just like, what? <laughs> Commentary so on this sort of like, like this idea of like the, the, you know, the perfect town or whatever. And I kind of like that, how they're all like just nasty, crazy people underneath. I sort of, I like that idea. Um, I like that what he was trying to do is make this buddy cop movie. So there's a lot of the action sequences are just sort of like stuff that you've seen in any of those movies that they mentioned, you know, like Point Break or what have you. Right. So I don't think it works as well character wise or, or as an, as a character and the character interactions aren't as good, but I still, I still really did enjoy it. I did laugh and, yeah, and I did have, too. A, have a good time watching it. Um, I love that he gets to fire his gun in the air and yell. Didn't you laugh at that? That was so funny. I was so expecting do you, it. Do you fire, have you ever fired your gun in the air and yelled? And he's like, no. <laughs> I was like, that, that was fucking great. Uh, I love that he gets to do it. I think yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, he does it. He does it really well. It's it's like it's a great setup. If you know it's coming already, it it does lose some of its fun. But uh, uh, yeah, because I mean, it's more I could, about, I yeah. don't remember even seeing this to be honest, like uh, through and through. So I think maybe for me it was easier too because I I didn't remember the movie. Yeah, so it's I don't know. Quite if maybe a while. I skipped well, when, it. When did you last what? see it, Denny? Was it was yeah. it recently that you seen it or? Uh it was. I mean, this came out like I I don't know. It was probably like. The year after it came out, because it came out. So this would have been better first try. Yeah, hundred percent. I definitely didn't see it in theaters because yeah. I was still in school in 2007 during April when you were broke, 20, and, and you I was couldn't broke. go to the movie. But theaters. I probably it's walked probably one into of the, the first school ones I saw the when I left yeah. college. Probably. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I think that the overall, I just like have a thing with Simon Pegg where I just assume it's going to be funny too, and I swear I laugh more just because of it. You know, and like even in Mission Impossible, anytime he's in, impossible. Mission Impossible. <laughs> uh, Mission Impossible. I uh, always laugh whenever he's on screen, just because he's stupid looking. Yeah. Like he just. <laughs> so just like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, no, because he has that goofy look. Like he's always got a goofy smile or like this fucking like surprised look. Or and he's he does that in this too. And or when he's being serious and he's got his stupid face on. Like <laughs> I don't know. He's got. He's just got a. Thing about him that's for me, I just like laugh at almost, not even <laughs> laugh with. Sorry, Simon Pegg, if you're listening. <laughs> I'm yeah, sure he's, I'm sure, I, yeah. yeah, he's probably yeah. quite comfortable. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. He's made a career he's like, out of fuck it. yourself, yeah. podcast guy. No one yeah. cares. Other than that, too. Yeah. I did. I, I think I laughed pretty hard when uh, they were doing that Romeo and Juliet play and it cut to Simon Pegg and Nick Frost's face. <laughs> yeah. And they were and just, they like, just like, at the bar, just, like, kind of booze. Shock. He's just like, yeah, what, like the what the hell the fuck is this? Is this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. That was pretty oh, funny. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I thought it was, de I mean, it's definitely, a nice, I'm, it was a nice change of pace from some of the other movies we've been doing. You know? I right. even like it as a compliment yeah. to Shaun of the Dead. I, I think it's it's a fun change to see different sort of like take on some of these, how, how what's different and what's the same in terms of the way they try to approach this and, and how they're like, okay, what we're doing is we're doing, it didn't have the combo where, you know, you didn't have romantic comedy meet zombie. You you have comedy meets buddy cop movie, which is already often those are already often somewhat comedies anyway. So you don't. It's not as interesting, I think, too, in terms of like how how they're mixing things up here. Um, All the buddy comedy stuff, yeah, that exists in this. Oh, I was yeah. an age when I loved that. So I Lethal Weapon, and oh, that was I, I loved those movies. Beverly Hills Cop. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Beverly Hills that Cop. That was a good one. Yeah. I tried to watch that. It does not seem to hold up No, well. we tried to start it too recently and we had to shut it off. You yeah. know what movie does hold up really, really well? Point Break. What? Really? I don't think Seriously. I've ever seen Point Break. Point Break is amazing. Is it? It is. Mm. It's, uh, she ended up doing, she, uh, she did The Hurt Locker and Zero Dark Thirty. Oh, really? No way. Yeah. She did that? I didn't know I did. Yeah, is that back when she was married to uh, James Cameron. Uh, James Cameron. Yeah. yeah. And you can tell like somebody, I mean, it's, it's basically a love story between what's his name and uh, what's his name. I forget. Keanu name. and um, Keanu. Um, it's not Patrick Swayze. Patrick Swayze, yeah. But I mean, some of the action is really good, and it's like over the top violent. And Gary Busey's in it too, and he's oh hilarious. boy, you always like <laughs> a good Gary Busey. Yeah. Oh, he's like an angry, <laughs> drunken man. Yeah, yeah. AKA just himself. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> he used to be right. endearing, but now he's kind of scary. He's definitely yeah. scary. Yeah. yeah. 
hundred percent. If you saw him on the street, I'd cross the road. He's like, I ain't going anywhere near him. Yeah. Uh, all right. So what else we got on this one? I thought, I mean, so have you guys seen baby driver? No. Yeah. I have seen you. Should, I think you should see it. TCA The music, the choreo, there's like this amazing, a lot of amazing uh, choreographed sequences of music and action that, okay. that are insanely well done. Um, I was reading that baby driver was that's, that was Edgar Wright's most profitable film. It did really well, apparently. So Hot Fuzz was his second, well, Scott Pilgrim. Well, he, did, he did World's End. Yeah. That did worse than yeah. Hot Fuzz. Hot Fuzz did 80 million. Yeah. World's End did 40 million. Still Sean, good. Shaun of the Dead did 30 million. Got yeah. Still good. Oh, no. They're, they're good for, they're, I mean, they're not high budget films, right? So There's no way. Ooh, Scott Pilgrim was a bomb. Budget 80, it? 85 million budget, 48 million box office. Ooh. But people people love that that's one. A, I wonder, I wonder one. if it, it I wonder if it did quite well in rentals and the like though, because people seem to really like it. But yeah, huh. it, that's a, it is a really good film. I, it, the very, advertising wasn't there because I was I would have watched it right in the theater, but I didn't. I don't know why. Because I got good reviews and it's like right up my alley. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So it must have been the advertising campaign was shitty or non existent. Or yeah. non existent, yeah, right. Minimal. Minimal, lovable product. Yeah. Bunch of people, uh, corporate types, watch it. And you're like, I don't get it. This That's isn't weird. good. Yeah, just it throw doesn't it out fit theaters. with our brand. I don't yeah. understand. <laughs> it doesn't have the right colors or the right feel. So you can kind of tell that the driving sequences from this movie were like his practice for Baby Driver. Like a lot of the same kind of edits for that hmm. fast pedals. Fast paced, like, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, ratcheting and lots the gears of movement, and whatnot. Lots of panning. Lots yeah. of fucking yeah. It's like a very easy movie to watch and, you know, accessible. It sounds like, I mean, if we listen to the commentaries, again, which I, I listened I to a whole one. I crammed, I crammed one in just now, so I listened to a whole one. But if you want oh, to just, wow. like, feel, hang out with any of these people, listen to the commentaries, including Tarantino. It's really funny to listen to Tarantino and Edgar Wright talk, and they just love movies, and they just sit there and talk about different movies they love and different actors, and, and they love talking about, like, cop buddy movies. I guess Tarantino showed Edgar Wright as he was making this, like, they went and had a double feature. And one of the films that they watched together was um, an Italian film called um, Live Like a Cop, Die Like a Man. <laughs> <laughs> I forget what the other one was called, and that's about when I fell asleep. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, it was you didn't funny. take notes just, in your dream. It's a great John. commentary, God, folks. No, I People really know. It's it. like I just had this feeling, which maybe it's just something I feel anyway. It's like I don't matter, so that's what happens in my dreams. I'm just like, yeah. Hey, what about? Hey, they're not listening to me. <laughs> How come they're not listening to me? <laughs> so the one thing I wanted to say is that if you once you get the three pack, I don't know if you guys are still going to get it. The first, thing, I do have it. I just do didn't have open it. it. So put the hot fuzz in, <laughs> I go read. to special features. There's a thing called um, Fuzzball Rally is what it's called in the special features. It's a 40 or 50 minute long kind of documentary. It's like a compiled blog. There was this guy that filmed a blog on the press, the American press tour for this movie. So it's, it's uh, Nick Frost, Simon Pegg, and Edgar Wright, and then the, the guy behind the camera. And it's from like, so they go to New York and then travel around the country and end at New York. And it's just kind of behind the scenes, following them around during a press tour and oh. it is wow i laughed way harder at that than the movie like there are <laughs> just two, them being themselves just them being themselves there's an ongoing gag so it was during the tour uh nick, it was nick frost's birthday so like at every hotel they stayed at he got a new birthday cake and he didn't want to <laughs> eat the birthday cake so he'd take it and he would flush the cake down the hotel toilet and they would film him <laughs> shoveling cake into the toilet and then they got like they got greedy towards them where they tried to put the whole cake in and then it started like overflowing and shit oh, it was god oh, it was no. hilarious funny yeah. yeah uh and there was one That's other funny. one other part that had me like crying laughing was when they were doing they like had a hotel conference room they rented out to do a bunch of phone interviews like on off days they had like 12 in a row phone interviews and they just started taking their clothes off and fucking with each other during these phone interviews there was no <laughs> video conferencing back then so it was just all audio and what, so like one person was responding to a question and the other two were just like in their underwear, just like humping each other and doing like little like <laughs> thumbs like uh, they call it giving them the V's. I don't know what it is, but oh, it yeah. must be a British thing where you go like oh, that. Oh, like, yeah, the fuck you. Yeah. It's what fuck, is It's that? a finger. It's the finger. It's the finger? Them. Yeah, that's how it's them. That's their version of fuck you. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So they do yeah. that a lot. I mean, it was it was fucking hilarious. There was one part where Edgar Wright had his pants around his ankles and he was like chugging along the outside of the conference room and just ran face first into a like uh, one of their posters they had. Hard to describe. <laughs> Fucking hilarious. Uh, I laughed really hard at that. So 
I'd recommend that for sure. Plus, it's also cool to see what a press tour is like because I've never mm. really seen behind the scenes of what a press tour is. It I looks, have no idea what that even is. Yeah. yeah. It's exhausting. They have like 14-hour days. Ooh, they like ooh. travel. They have 14-hour days where they get to be the men. <laughs> the man, right? They don't. I know. Like, it doesn't seem like they actually like they it. They promote the shit out of Who what they Who would, would doing? like it? Yeah. They just have yeah. to be at a certain time, do a certain thing, but like, come on, they're getting paid. Oh, yeah. But the like they have, you know, it's... I think they did it for 28 days in the States and they went to like all the big cities and some smaller cities and it was like, they get up early, like they did, couldn't even party. You could tell like they were all right, just like, you gotta as get soon up as they early were tired. Start. Yeah. yeah. Like they end, they get up at seven, they end work at 11 and they have to go to the hotel and they get up to fly. They land, they have an interview, they have nine phone things, they have a, a screening, they have to like talk to, they have a Q and A afterwards and they have a late night interview and it's like, that's one day. It's just a lot of like, it's just a lot of like yeah. them having to be what like um, interacting with yeah, people and promoting yeah. themselves to be funny, all the time yeah. to answer the yeah. same questions over and over again like yeah but you know what be hard. that's what they get paid for i'm yeah, sorry I, I have no sympathy I for know. it just tired yeah it just doesn't seem like a, an yeah. easy or fun thing to do and it just gave me like uh you know when, <laughs> when you see people on tv and they seem like they're enjoying it that's an act and like that's oh, kind yeah. of impressive because oh, yeah. they're not oh, yeah. having fun doing that no i think no some, some people probably might be enjoy like, it. Some people love the attention so much they might, but like they, yeah, the narcissists, they don't. Love it. Like you could tell these guys right. are just like doing because you have to because they love the movie making part of it. Well, and they, they want they, their they movie to be successful. The movie, they can't do the movie making part without this part. Right, right, right. right. This is it? This yeah. is part of what yeah. makes it. They're successful, selling themselves, so. like especially yeah. for these guys. They're selling the team between Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, and then the director from Shaun of the Dead. So mm-hmm. they're gonna ride right. that wave, right? It's still cool, though. They get to tour. I'm sure they love all that shit. And then they got days off some places and they get to go see shit. Like, yeah, it's great. There was, there was a lot of very funny parts. And they were fucking around with each other the entire time. I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, you get bored. Yeah. Doing the same conversation every day with the different interviewers and the different people. I can imagine it. It's the same thing bands go through, right? When yeah. they tour. They have to do all that shit. Yeah, but I don't know. I, just thinking about, I don't know, who's... But they get to play music. Do you it's think not it's like fun, these guys but, get but to tour with, tour with Brad yeah. Pitt? Like, if you're touring in a movie with Brad Pitt, do you think you're, like, making a joke on him in the... Like, when he's taking a piss at a urinal in a hotel bathroom? Possibly. And he'll laugh Pro- about it? Maybe. I don't think so. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I, don't I could see it. I could probably see be it. careful. It depends on how important you want to be in Hollywood. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's, you know... I don't know. These guys oh. just seem like 12-year-old kids that are adults now. And, can, and they're like, friends, and, and too. They're, friends. they're real yeah. friends. Yeah. So that was, it was good. So I got that relationship and who knows? There and might the not be a, in that thing. Yeah. yeah, but there might also not be that situation with other movies and other stars. They may not no, do. No, 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 no. They fact, may not do seen, that stuff together. Quite the they opposite. might do it separately. Or, or yeah. you imagine if they go, they have to go on these press tours and they all hate each other, but they have to pretend like they don't. Yeah. For, yeah. Like, right. oh, man. That'd be kind but of But that's rough. when they show up separately. They they sleep in separate places. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like it's yeah. I don't know, Kate Hudson. Know. Did we have any pranks on set? Yeah, uh, no. I don't know. <laughs> no, we don't do <laughs> that. We don't get fired. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they don't no, seem we like show fun up people. and we uh we worship and then we go home. Yeah. Yeah. Uh what else I got? They shot it in Wales. Okay. Yeah, isn't that exactly. cool? That's where uh, uh, Edgar Wright grew up, so he knew. Isn't a lot there a little places. village in a little village in Wales? So Wales, that's Wales, apparently. Is it, oh, just Wales. It, Wales itself is just a little village. Yeah, and that's all it, it looks is? like. What? Yeah, when you I talks, thought Wales was like a country or it's a, region or it's something. A, uh, it's a city. <laughs> it's a quote unquote city, but Shows it's like the smallest city ever. I don't know anything. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Anything Wales, about it I don't know Wales is a city. I you no could idea. tell me anything, and I'd be like, "Cool." They talked about <laughs> it a little bit in the commentary because Edgar Wright's from there, and he wanted to. Like an action movie there because they never film. He says they never film action movies in England, but he right. didn't count James Bond. I don't know why. Well, well, the reason he okay. didn't count James Bond, Edgar and Tarantino go into that, um, is that 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 Bond is like only there momentarily in London. Like he's always somewhere else, annoyingly so. But the headquarters are always in London. Yeah, right? so maybe there's a week there. He's there in the headquarters, but then he's off traipsing around somewhere else. So it's not really in London. It's always showing off some other part of the world, which is annoying. Wales, oh, okay. Wales is like middle of nowhere, or what? I mean, it's not that far off from Manchester and London. Let's I guess it's out. kind of the outskirts. It's the outskirts. It is the outskirts. But Edgar Wright, there was a uh, a scene where he goes into Summerfield. Was the name of that grocery store they go into a few times? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was where they had the bulletproof uh, deli container there. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that that store is a real store in Wales, and uh, Edgar Wright used to work there. 
He used to pick up trash in the parking lot. No, he, he's an extra in there, right? He's like one of the, the stock boys in the film. Oh, is he? But he used to work there as a child. Wait, you did not know that? No, he didn't talk yeah, about that. He, he's one of the stock boys. How far did he you get? That's the end of the movie. Where your you dreams did not are know that? <laughs> <laughs> what, Daddy? I'm I'm really confused. Right. If you're joking yeah. or if you're surprised, I can't. Tell. I think no, he's no, joking. No, I'm totally I'm totally not joking. He was. <laughs> he's he not was joking. In the film. <laughs> no, I mean, okay. Uh, now I'm actually now confused. I still we're don't talking know, about yeah. different things. <laughs> what are we talking about? No, but he was in reality. I'm not talking about the movie in he, the film. <laughs> No, oh, in the reality. <laughs> when he was like 12 years As old. As a stock boy. Yes. In the film, too. In the right. film. Stocking yes. in the film. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> uh, but he thought it was That's good right. because the people that <laughs> yeah, still yeah, worked the there, and now he's directing a $30 million budget movie. Right. Used to so it is, kinda, it is funny that he was there as an extra and he was a director. Yeah. So meta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah have you guys heard about Nick Frost and his past? No. no. I'm just going to read the quick... That? This is very short, but this surprised me. So I'm just going to read this real quick. Frost is the son of John Frost and his Welsh wife, Tricia, who were once office furniture designers. When he was 10, his sister died of an asthma attack when she was 18. When Frost was 15, his parents' business failed and they lost their family home. They moved in with neighbors where he witnessed his mother having a stroke due to stress. Uh, oh, shit. And she died. Right. Um, yeah, Frost damn. left school and took a job with a shipping company to support his family. He subsequently spent two years at a kibbutz in Israel he met Simon Pegg while working as a waiter at a North London Mexican restaurant, and the two became close friends and flatmates. And then he well, works. No way. You know, he was there when Pegg was writing Spaced and was a, a part of that show. And he brought oh. him on to Shaun of the Dead. Wow. That's so, so he wasn't, random. He wasn't going to be an actor. Like, he had no... It wasn't in his sights at all. He just met Simon wow. Pegg and fell into the part. Wow. It was like Simon wow. Pegg's love of him. Simon Pegg thinks Nick Frost is the funniest person on the planet. I mean, he kind of, <laughs> he's fucking hilarious yeah. just by him being him. He was his waiter was and, he, and he made guys. friends with his waiter. That's how funny he was. You're, you're and he a, probably, it's, he must have gone to that place a lot, right? Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like it's like the but local. Still, you ever befriended a waiter that you've had? No. I don't think so, right? Yeah. PC's thinking. I don't think I, 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 don't think I go to the places enough to like know the waiter. Yeah, or small talk them enough. But I feel like in London, them. that's a thing, right? They call it their local and they go there constantly. And if you were to go there constantly and that was always the waiter and you'd get Maybe. to know him because it's a small area. But like for where, <laughs> where we grew up, no in Boston, way. you can't talk to strangers. Yeah. They'll fucking yell no at you. No way. They'd be like, dude, fuck you. I'm not here for friends. I'm here for your money. Shut yeah. the fuck <laughs> up, dude. What do you want to drink? Yeah. Exactly. You might be friendly with them, but you wouldn't know them. You know? Right. And then here in LA, you'd be like, what are you talking? You, there's too many places. You don't go to the same place enough. Or you try to sell your yeah. screenplay to the, the barista there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been in Ubers where they like pitch me shit. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Sounds. Guy gave me a that fucking, is... guy gave me a fucking tablet once with his trailer ready oh. to go. Oh, God. Jesus Ooh. Christ. Was it All I did was mention I work at a studio. That was it. <laughs> hey, man, you should take a look at my fucking documentary series. Great. <laughs> Dumbest it's fucking great. thing I've ever seen. It's yeah. great. No, it's not. Yeah. Guaranteed no, it's not. No, it's not, dude. <laughs> Keep driving. Yeah, anyway. Uh, uh, <laughs> I saw. Um, Keep your dreams in your thoughts, kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Try as hard as you can and then have a backup. Always yeah. just hey, keep it to uh, yourself. Keep your eyes on the road, pal. <laughs> Having the knowledge of a trade is it's worth his weight in gold these days. <laughs> yeah, kids. right. The unions are hiring. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But they shot a lot of the exteriors in Wales, and it was freezing there all the time, and it rained a lot of the time. They actually used some of the rain for day-for-night shots, like there's some nighttime raining scenes that were actually during the day. They were planning on shooting the night scenes at night, but they're like, oh, we could just shoot during rain cover and then edit it to make it look like it's nighttime. Like it's nighttime. Most of the commentary track was Edgar Wright talking about what he pulled from. Like, he talked specifically about specific movies or specific director's tactics for the things he was going for. Like a lot of the overlapping and phasing edits were like Steven Soderbergh edits he likes. Hmm. And he thought like the first one he did, he's like, all right, so Steven Soderbergh does it during action scenes to confuse you. I'm going to do it mm. during a scene where people are doing paperwork because that's never been right. done before. That's kind of cool. I mean, yeah. just expounding upon someone else's. He's trying to make paperwork look interesting. Like, sure, right. go for it. Yeah. He mentioned Dirty Harry, Point Break, the Die Hard movie, obviously. Good and the Bad, the Ugly, Desperado. Uh, he mentioned James Bond, the A-Team, John Woo movies, Michael Bay, Steven Soderbergh, Tony Scott. Uh, and he actually said that when Nick Frost's character comes in at the end, he did that specifically because of LA Confidential. 
Remember when we talked about how the Russell Crowe character, we thought he was dead, and then at the end, he right. just appears out of nowhere? That, right. that was because, we didn't pick this up, but that was because um, test screenings said that they wanted they didn't want his character to die. So they reshot oh. it, the end, with him just being alive in the car, which is why that was so <laughs> stupid. But it was done oh. with these audiences. It's, they a, it's, like not, it's not what the audience was. The audience was like, hey, why did he yeah. die? Okay, he didn't die. Yeah. He didn't die. Yeah, he he didn't die. Didn't there die. he is. All right, he's he's right. funny you mention that because he's actually alive. Yeah, you, you wait, wait two now. minutes. <laughs> wait two minutes. He's in the back of the car. You'll be happy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. So that's why yeah. he did that. All the uh, the scenes where they're sliding around, uh, along the floor, they just grease the floor with KY jelly. Nice. Oh, okay. It's yeah. a lot of KY jelly. <laughs> it's a lot. It sounded like Edgar Wright is friends with uh, Tarantino and uh, Rodriguez right around mm-hmm. this time. Um, when they were going on the tour during this uh, Buzzball Rally documentary thing, they stopped in uh, L.A. for the opening screening of Grindhouse, which is that Tarantino-Rodriguez collaboration. And he, he was like during the, he was up there during the Q&A and stuff and they hung out for the day. Some numbers here. It took him 18 months to write this screenplay and the ideas of it. It, had t- been it took s- them like three, didn't it take him like two or three months to write Shaun of the Dead? Yeah. And, and this, he was like, yeah. So 18 months to write once they kind of sat down and did it. Uh, but this, these, all these ideas were kind of in Edgar Wright's head for a long time. Um, and he actually had parts of the movie that he took out and became The World's End, which we'll watch in a couple of weeks. Uh, yeah. He wanted to uh, to bring in a bunch of people going on a competitive uh, bar crawl. That was going to be a part <laughs> of this movie, but it was like too yeah. much. So they had to take it out. Huh. But so 18 months to write it and 11 weeks to shoot, which is kind of a pretty tight schedule. They had like all these relocations. They had only a day in a lot of them. So like a lot of the uh, individual scenes were shot in one day, which is pretty good. Pretty it fast. It is pretty good, actually. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's how they work. They operate quickly these days. Yeah. And the last thing I have is that scene where they're pushing the uh, row of shopping carts towards the deli, the bulletproof mm-hmm. deli container, yeah. and it shatters. They weren't supposed to make it shatter. Like, they weren't supposed to break it at oh, all. Oh, no. They made it bulletproof oh. because Edgar Wright wanted to blow it up with, with bolts and everything. But they're like, no, it's too expensive. Like, these things are actually pretty expensive. You can't fit it into the budget. But uh, so they did, that's why it became bulletproof. They wrote that into the screenplay so it, it would make sense. That it wasn't breaking, but then when they were pushing for the stunt, they it they broke, broke it the first time. And Edgar oh, was like, yeah. "I was happily, I was very secretly happy that that happened." Uh, yeah, right. Because <laughs> that was the original it. goal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's all I got. All right. I mean, nice. it was an easy. This is an easy one. This yeah. was a good time. I, I didn't mind it. I know. Oh yeah, it's, I didn't like uh, it, Denny, pl- as pl- much. Pl- but well, it's it wasn't. All it wasn't it's awful. Wrong with Denny. You know? We need to worry about what's wrong with Denny. Yeah, and hopefully he'll get better. Well, next yeah. week I can react. There won't be any laughs next week, so that'll be good. Oh yay! Oh, so yeah, you you want to feel bad about not laughing? Exactly. Are you feel what is bad this about, one what now? You... What is next week? We're watching the 2003 movie Old Boy. Oh, uh, not okay. the remake, the uh, Chan Wook Park, the original. Version. Yes. Okay. Oh so, yeah, the synopsis yeah. of this one is: After being kidnapped and imprisoned for 15 years, Ode Su is released, only to find that he must find his captor in five days. This is, I've seen this. Okay. It's weird. This is a weird Easy, one. Have you seen this At one? Least, I don't remember no. anything about Ooh. it other than that it's very weird. Ooh, prepare yourself, TC. Oh, That's no. Right. It's an it's a extreme one. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. This is another Tarantino's, uh, we're back to backing Tarantino's favorite, favorite movie. Yeah. He's got a lot of favorites. He guy. does. Yeah. You'll see why. It's right up his alley. It's a bunch of, bunch of weird yeah. shit. I'm already not liking this. I'm excited. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, yeah we'll have to, to see how it goes. Not negative. Yeah. Oh, it, it, it'll be interesting. You'll, you'll like you'll it. Be interested. You'll be interested. Like I don't think you, I don't, you won't be bored, TC. And if you don't like it, okay. pop, pop it out and pop in the Josh Brolin version. It's supposed to be way worse. It's directed by Spike Lee. It's supposed to be terrible. <laughs> Came out a Spike's few years yeah, ago. Make you, they make your mind even more annoying. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. You can't yeah. read. Yeah. Just watch Josh yeah. Brolin do it. If you think this is bad, see how bad it really could have really been. It could yeah. be. I right, heard they were going right, to remake right. Parasite with Josh Brolin in it. I can't wait. Oh, get out of town. Oh, yeah. You got to take those, uh, the Korean movies and just put Josh Brolin in there. It really fixes uh, it up uh, for the American audience. It fixes audiences. up everything. Jesus. <laughs> Whoa. All right, All right, boys. All right. All right. So thanks for listening. Is it going to be top 250? Top 250 TC. No.
John? No, I'd say not for this one. No. I'm going to go NARP. How about that? NARP. NARP. Oh, I forgot oh, about you. Narp. Narp. I love that. That was funny. I <laughs> love that. Funny. Did you not laugh? You had that to laugh. I didn't you laugh at laugh. all. Dude. Narp. You didn't laugh when he was puzzled and he goes, NARP? No. <laughs> NARP? It was, yeah. I didn't. I was just, I guess I was just in a down mood this weekend. You must. All right, hey, sorry. I, I, I blame myself. You. Monday through Sunday. Right. So yeah. you're all good. Yeah. All right. All right. Cheer up, Jenny. On that sad, sad note. Got anything to say there, Timmy? Ah, rate and subscribe. Uh, go to the Great Duck Theater and uh, um, fucking old boy, huh? Yeah, hey, we're about to go into the theater soon, guys. We're almost all vaccinated yeah. and stuff. Yeah, that's right. Nice. That's right. Get vaccinated. Get everyone. vaccinated, people. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. All right, guys. All right. All right. Next Talk week. Next soon. week. Talk to you soon.